Oh, that anyways. Oh yeah. Dear. So uh, anyways, it's a mum gift. It's also yeah. <laughs> Mummies Sorry. are not the plot right now, or well, are they? Find well, out now. Yeah. So uh, you're still in the suburbs. You kind of got that whole information dump, and uh, Virik is feeling trust, which he's quite proud of, walking with a, a, a with pride, uh, while uh, the others are thinking, "What's next for the Greyfists?" What time is it? It's still pretty early. It's sort of one of those things where it'd be like around ten, eleven. Like it's 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 getting to noon, time. but yeah, no, it's pretty early in the day. <laughs> okay. Sky Chariot's pretty fast when you're not going very far. Yeah. It mostly went sideways, which they can do easy. Mm-hmm. Well. Um We wanna get back down to ground and do some investigation. Well, if we have a yeah. meeting to catch. That's in the evening. Oh, okay. We're fine. I think well, you may as well try and find our friend from the alley. Well, your friend from the alley. Uh, 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 just absurd how you meet people these days, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, that's like the first rule of engagement. You never try to stab a man while he's peeing. No, it's just rude. <laughs> it's just inconsiderate, really. Chivalry is dead. Anyways, Absolutely. I can reach into my coat for... Um, you are still my... in the sky. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We need to get. <laughs> yeah, that. don't run. We just kinda... don't run. All right, you're no. off. <laughs> oh, it's that way. <laughs> Funny fell. story. The last time someone had a pet dog in this game, fell off a mountain during a during a blizzard. That's terrible. It, yeah. I I very much enjoyed myself. <laughs> oh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> oh let's, my god. Uh, let's not throw our. Yeah. No, Stop. take another two gold chariot back down to rare, yeah. more or less where you were before. Yeah. And I will pay for it again. So, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, then you give Boar some of the smell. Yeah. I'm going to give him the scrap of cloth and use my primeval sense stuff to basically just infer that I want him to find this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he got a 20 and a 19. This is a good oh. dog. This is a good boy. A good boy. This is a good boy. Uh, so, you uh, start heading out. In, you basically follow him. He just starts like, running. And you, 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 fuck, you fucking follow. You uh, follow him through uh, the Mercantile District where you landed into the, uh, the, the area where your tavern is. Um, through uh, the sort of more rundown slums goes out the city gate and so everything is like following a dog by like to the guards <laughs> as you run after the dog um Varric, you figure out very quickly that he is going to that mausoleum uh, it's like it's get, before you get there that you're like yeah where else is i, he I going, will relay the right? information and be like we don't want to go there yet uh if it's heading in this direction yeah when we get to that point where Varric says this i'll recall him he will come back a little confused, definitely. Sir. And I'll I'll pat him on his head and tell him he's a good boy and give him some jerky rations. Well, you know he wanted that cheese. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give him a little piece of cheese. Yeah, if, a little bit of jerky, a little bit of cheese. See, now you have pocket cheese too, because you kept it. Right. <laughs> I don't have a problem, you have a problem. We're all going to have pocket cheese by the end of this. Uh-huh. Oh, that makes me very happy. <laughs> I just like look to Eleanor with like a concerned look like this is gonna be a conversation later. <laughs> um yeah, I, I give him a very small piece of this and I'm like, you did a good job. But you no, know, we can't go there yet. Do we wanna prepare for the meeting tonight then? Because we don't want to go to the, the vineyard or the, the mausoleum before this meeting just in case they recognize us. They might not go to the vineyard anymore. They might After not. the fire, we could do a cursory glance, but we need to find out where it is first. We don't know which one burnt down. You do know which road it is. Though. Road. We know which road it's going on. So yeah. we have an idea, and we can probably have a general area if we want to go. We could take a stroll. 
Okay, and I'll lead them in the mm-hmm. direction down the road that the man was going down. Absolutely. These roads start heading into the forest, but areas of the forest where areas between the giant trees have been cleared for these private vineyards. Maybe you pass a couple. And you don't even have to do any sort of checks. It's a little way up the road. You don't, It's not even on the road you're walking. It's on like a road off that road, but you can see it. You can see the burnt vineyard. Because not just is the, the, the houses of the vineyard built, burnt down but the entire all the the vines the, the rows of vines that, that make up the vineyard are just charred and blackened and, and uh, interesting by the elements there is a basically a a, a uh, small sort of villa attendant to the property and also this property has a metal fence around it all of uh, a sharp spiked uh, metal fence of the whole thing um but the gate to it is slightly open. It's one of the things where when you go to look at it closer, it has a chain that's meant to like close the gate up and lock it, but it's been unlocked, but not like f- uh, unlocked, but then opened enough that someone could step through instead of fully unopening the gate and never got uh, closed again. This raises a couple questions. Uh, where is the king getting his supply from now could be an old burnt out supply that he's running down slowly which might be why well you saw so much action right you saw a lot of things happening that night yes perhaps they're moving soon which uh, is more reason to get some investigation done we have someone to find as he's and he's going to step through do you want to stealth or anything or just gonna uh you know what just in case i'm going to do is anyone i'm going to go with you or are you going to stealth in lonesome uh, being the shadow monk <laughs> yep well i mean i just realized i should change your um thing to shadow monk on here but i haven't done it yet <laughs> um so if someone wants to to come with they can uh, he's gonna start, you, as he like steps through. You're gonna see the whole like shadows gripping to him a little tighter. Yeah. Um, mm. It's a shadowy area because it's in. It's not in the canopy of trees, but it's got the fence and it's got enough wildlife. It, it, it's almost as if like when he's walking through and you see like the spots of sun, he's a little more visible there, and it's almost as if he's less visible in the the parts that's yeah. a little shadowy as he's going through. Hard to look at. If you want, I can come with you. Okay. For an extra set of eyes, perhaps. That would be smart. Yeah. Let's uh... leave the heavies at the door. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Both of you give me stealthy checks. I will command the dog to stay. Followed by perception checks. Alright. Stealth. 25. Uh, 25. 34. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love Pass Without a Trace. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> It's a real powerful spell. It's one of those things where you two standing at the gate, they are gone. <laughs> you know they're in there. Of course they are, and they can shout if they if you need them. But they are gone. They are gone, as Tesh would say. <laughs> uh, I really, I just like that. The, the way you say that, oh, it makes me very happy. Um, <laughs> and you go and... Uh, First of all, you poke around a little bit of the burnt down uh, plants and you immediately notice that the, the a couple of undergrown uh, grapes on here are of a blue colour. They look almost magical in nature, um, but all the plants are dead. There's Might just sort of, a couple of those just in case. Yeah, you try and find a couple that are like good enough. Who knows what use they might have. And then you go into the actual... Uh, villa house proper. Now it's clear that on a lot of these, this actually would be somewhere, a place where people were living. But here it just sort of looks like that as a bit of a facade, where inside it's just empty. I mean, it would have been empty even before it's burnt down and the roof has collapsed inwards. What you notice immediately, Virik, is the amount of dead bodies. And one very charred body of clearly a elvish woman uh, with several others and actually both of you noticed that when you start noticing more Varric when you're like oh, I don't want to look at that 
near the way you're entering, the sort of the front door of this uh, structure, are two bodies that are much, much more recent than the others and are not, actually aren't burnt. It took you a bit of time to notice because they've sort of fallen in this ash and there's been enough wind to cover them that they kind of look burnt. When you actually properly look at them, these people have died months ago. These people died days ago. You don't know. You can give a medicine check to try and figure it out. But clearly much more recently. And they look like they would have been King of Spears men. They just the clothing they're wearing, the scars and stuff. Okay. I will do the silent, like, the point to mm -hmm. these that I found. So you know. Um, I'm also going to just try and... One thing I, I want to look for in particular is any bits of paper, uh, like any bits of like documentation that isn't burnt, specifically something that has handwriting on it. Investigate checks. Yep. Both of you can do that. Sure. Ooh, I will take that. Yeah, 16 is good. Four is not as good. But together you make 20, so you know what? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where Tobias kind of knows his job in these kind of things. He's keeping watch. It's not this, yeah. yeah. He's not the yeah. one checking yeah. the stuff. He does a cursory glance, but like, you have your weapon, your like hands ready to fight just mm -hmm. in case. And Virk, you start poking around. This entire place is horribly burnt. You, you find what would maybe be interesting papers, but they're just nothing. Bottles yeah. for, for making this wine, nothing. And you find a trap door. Well, that's interesting. You creak it open. You move stuff out of the way. You creak it open. Down there, you find more bottling supplies. And something moving. And shuffling a little. A uh, body that looks not burnt, but probably died quite a while ago. Not like the ones in the doorway. Just sort of shuffling and dragging itself around in this little area. Now, behind it appears to be a desk with paperwork that was probably still being written on. Okay. <laughs> uh, here comes the fun part. So I'm going to do the whole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and very stealthily when it's like shuffled in, in a direction where I can get around it, mm -hmm. go down, grab as much as I can, and come back Please up. Please give me another stealth roll. Now you have to do real bad. 23. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to do real bad I, to do I, bad. I, I don't think it's physically possible for uh, this to be. Uh, no, okay. Yeah, no, it's one of things where. It, it, you, you just sort of swoop it and, and grab all the things as possible. It's kind of when you're moving the papers, this thing is and turns and you are aware that even though this body is in a much better condition, being underground and not burnt, that is a walking dead man. Oh, yep. <laughs> um, and kind of like, does it just kind of turns in your direction, but doesn't chase you and you, you go run out, yep. climb back up the the ladder and have a degree of, of the, the, the paperwork and stuff. And probably stole one of the ink pots and stuff as well. Just everything on that desk. Yeah. Anything, because, I mean, you probably know why I'm stealing stuff specifically with handwriting, mm -hmm. so the ink pot would definitely make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm just going to sort of gesture for us to move out. It's one of those things, that... when you're doing that, you notice that some of these bodies... Not the the four more charred female one are starting to sort of like get up. They're very slow. Yep. It's not. It's honestly not a threat. Yeah, it's just the we need to go now. Look yeah. like. Yeah. What um, I would like to do as we're um, kind of exiting here is all these bodies that are around us are kind of starting to move or twitch a little bit, right? No, well, they're starting to stand up. They're starting to actually get up. Yeah. Okay. It just takes them like around yeah. six seconds each. I want to try to get like <laughs> like a finger or something off of one of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's an athletics check. 
Okay. <laughs> I respect the your Crack. gumption though. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, no. No, it rolled even worse. Uh not much <laughs> worse, but worse. <laughs> Uh, actually, you rolled a five, it rolled a four, it just had less modifier. So I was like, you, you do that, like, the one beside you that's starting to get up, and you're like, I'm not really scared of this, like, charred zombie. It was like... He's gonna reach over it's and, like... like uh, and you're like... It's like... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in my pocket, and then follow fear. And then you guys leave a little faster than the others. They... Oh, yeah. After you do that, they start following you. Now, they are slow... But they are now noticing noticeably the lot of them following you. Yep. Uh, so we're going to get back to the gate and uh, just almost appear out of nowhere to them. But uh, okay, we got undead. And time to go. <laughs> so things yep. when you notice them like pop up from like the side of the fence, you can look past them. You wouldn't have even noticed them before, even though you were keeping watch, because they are charred blackened zombies coming out of a charred blackened house into mm -hmm. shadows then you notice them just starting to drag themselves closer and they are very much definitely zombies they are slow and arms gonna... even outstretched turn to eleanor and say well let's uh kill some undead shall we and i'm gonna pull out my longsword <laughs> <laughs> oh okay that's okay we're not okay yep <laughs> put my bag on put, uh, put my bag off rather on the side and yep Okay, I'm gonna go back and uh, with my now because I still have stealth. I'm gonna stealth into the vines to get ready. Yep, yep, yep. Give me a moment. Hey. I'm just gonna... I want to point out I'm walking directly towards them. In case no, I, I know you. But basically, placement. Yeah, no. You, yeah. I imagine you and Aelnor and probably even Tobias are just basically just straight. Yeah, up also, as I before I stealth into the thing, I'm just gonna say uh, her body wasn't moving. Don't worry about that. It's in there. We can get it after. And then Good. we go. Foof. Okay. I'm gonna whistle to the dog and tell him to like piss off for a while. Keep a distance. Yeah, he is, <laughs> he is smart dog. He is not combat dog. Yeah, he's, until, he's a good doggo. Who, until plot a good doggo, makes yeah. him a combat dog, because that's well, how it works. Yeah. All right, one moment, please. These boys have moved. All right. Well, are you eating Ritz? Same. Is this a brand deal? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wish. I just cut out the middleman. I'm like just. I mean, yeah, I love Ritz as a brand deal. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, the cheese what? The best that thing cheese. is, if this had been um, this also, uh, have, last like, week, I would have had Ritz, and I could have done the same thing. <laughs> Ritz, hit us up. With you that guys break. are. Never mind. Uh, so why don't <laughs> wait? Wait! Alert! Now, okay, why don't you roll me initiative, Ross? I had cleared <laughs> it from last time. Why don't... Oh no, I have to move the turn order because it's covering my mini. Yeah, I, I, I never win with turn order. It's particularly bad when we're doing something that doesn't happen on the battle map. I wonder oh, what yeah. initiative roll they're gonna get. Oh, it's really good. It's a <laughs> zombie rolling initiative. They rolled a whopping three. Alright, there we go. Higher than me. Where, where are you? Oh, you I didn't. You didn't tag your mini. I did too. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> Why would a computer lie to me? Anyway. So, uh, Virik, you're actually like off on the side, and you're still stealthed. Yep. Go ahead. I am going to move right up to here. Um, I love I'm these just... combats. Where I can't I'm... see you until you're just there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now uh, sitting here waiting for something to happen. I've got my oh, yeah, yeah. boomerang and my short sword ready. Tobias. <sighs> what to do? I'm going to use my... Because uh... I'm too far away to actually do much. Yeah, all right. I'm going to move up 30 feet. Ooh. Cool. Be my guest. Hello. <laughs> yes, as long as that is okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to move through your square? Okay. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then I will cast Slayer's Prey on this guy back here. Oh. And, I mean, that's, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Well, music's too loud. Now, Bert, what are you doing? 
step in there, and I'm gonna swing at him with my long sword. Please swing at him with your long sword, sir. That is a hit, sir. That is good news, <laughs> sir. It's also a zombie. Four, it's not that hard. Eight oh, damage. Damn. It's those things where you're like, you probably run, like run and use the momentum to slash a thing. It's a zombie. It doesn't try to dodge until after it's already been hit. <laughs> yeah. But it's a hardy thing. And also it's mm. got almost like a layer of like completely charred flesh on the outside that kind of brittles and snaps and then there's the gooiness of inside. It's very unpleasant. You know when you're cooking a brisket. Oh. It's a, he's got he's got a brisket body. Yeah. <laughs> brisket boys. Oh. That's how it is. Is that what it says on the monster manual? It's under uh, right here yeah, under B. Body. For brisket, brisket body. <laughs> oh, this isn't the monster man. This is my cookbook. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to immediately attack back at you. Set the king of spears burning his victims alive. What's yeah. your AC? Three. Fifteen. Oh, Ooh. he hits you. That makes of me course he does. happy. Of course he does. It, you, you just get hit. That's what you do here. That's my job. It's you, fine. I mean, you are the cleric. I am. Uh, it's one of the things where you, you hit it and it kind of like dodges and just twists into you and you understand undead at this point. You've fought a form of them before. Uh, many forms yeah. before actually at this point. Yeah. And it just starts swinging at you. You know what to expect, but a zombie doesn't attack you in a way a man does. You can't really dodge with a shield. It just kind of like does this almost crushing hug. They're just all mm. like... And ends up hitting you for four damage. But don't worry. There's more zombies. But wait, there's more. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Best part is because where I move myself, I can't see any of this. Mm hmm. I can see that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got to count on how many Hell of no. these there were before you ran out, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, no, actually, I probably wouldn't have gotten a good count because uh, there was a lot of bodies. It's Can... hard to tell what was going to move and what wasn't. Can Virik count? Yeah, Virik can count. He, he, was okay. taught, he needed to be able to take orders. Mm, and, like, right. Uh, yeah, he would have been taught Fair. that sort of stuff. Fair. I had that one. I hope you kill it so that the other one doesn't have advantage on me next turn. That would be, that's ideal, right? That's yeah. A rude thing to say. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't Is been rolling good? great decision either. It's a 12. That's a hit. Oh. It's a zombie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It isn't trying to dodge. Some of the things you actually run up, and as it's uh, that. D6 dropped off this table and is gone. Ether. <laughs> um, in the ether, yeah. My cat's gonna find that. She likes to yeah. boot D6s in particular. Uh, oh, oh, oh. You run up and straight up decapitate that zombie. And then it like, starts you. turning to you. Excellent. Like, it is not down. That's unfortunate. Alright. Very. Okay, so I'm going to peek around and see what's going on. Oh, that's what's it's going on. It's like one of you like hide. Okay, should be time now. You turn around, they're all like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, so that's one. Let's see. Two, three, four, five. Is the one beside me dead? No. No. It's head just being decapitated. Removed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to confirm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Still standing. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna. Uh, I'd like to have done Delicious. some stuff, but I'm gonna have to do this first. Um, uh, okay, I'm actually gonna throw my boomerang at this one here first. And. There it is. Are you? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> do that and then catch oh, DM, oh, I have one been condescending. Oh, oh, and then nope. Oh. Goodbye, boomerang. It. It's it okay. It's okay. The I actually have two boomerangs at the moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can uh, get that but later. I'm going to actually sprint up, and because that is actually one of the, uh, that's still a simple weapon, I get one uh, bludgeoning thing. The fist attack. I, I derped. Unarmed. That's the one. I'm going to run up and I'm going to unarm it. <laughs> Monk is so complicated. <laughs> I'm going to kick it. I'm just going to run up and kick it. <laughs> run up and kick it in the where the ball should be. As a hit. 
<laughs> it hit more than the boomerang. <laughs> it's the momentum, it's the run up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sending chunks of brisket body into Tobias. Sorry. <laughs> off. It's Tobias' turn next. Tobias, at this point, the zombies are just pouring out of the burnt building towards you. Yeah. Well, there's one adjacent to me, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you have an advantage on melee attacks on it. It's yep. true. So let's attack him with a short sword. Huzzah. That's a hit. That's good damage. And I will attack him a second time. Oh, wow. It was so close <laughs> to being good. But you also right. don't have multi-attack. Yeah, because I have my two weapons out. Oh, yes. For some reason, I I complete. I haven't played D&D &D for a long time. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot that you had two swords. Completely forgot, and that is a hit. It's a zombie. Oh. Oh, wow. Isn't that, isn't that like the, their AC? Zombies and oozes. Don't yeah. try to dodge. For no. five piercing damage. Yeah. Wow. You, uh, with, with that second strike that honestly is embarrassing, you even slightly, like, you know, like, oh, body parts are falling <laughs> at me, and you're like, <laughs> and it's like, gonna you hack into the side enough that it just sort of crumples in on itself, and you just stomp on it when it hits on the ground, and, like, the head explodes like a overly cooked melon. <laughs> Who's cooking melon? I don't know. Tobias has never seen a melon. It's kind of uh, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, uh, Alright, thanks. Okay. Yeah? Alright. Baru! The this one that I was mission. attacking before, this one. No head, man. No head, man. Uh, <laughs> That's my policy until the third date. No head, man. Very important policy. Uh, I am going to swing at it with my long sword. With advantage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's a crit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be down. <laughs> and now I'm gonna roll two ones. Pretty close. Well, two threes. <laughs> two? Th uh, well, no, I rolled a how, two. How does Barut want to kill a headless zombie? Well, uh... You got a crit. I imagine it's probably reaching up for where its head was in this <laughs> moment. <laughs> and I am going to just carve into it like I'm carving a brisket and I'm going to take off its oh. entire flank and essentially oh, cut Lord, it diag diagonally almost in half till the hip bone where I will nice and cleanly cut it back off so that you have a nice clean cut of flesh. The inference from this is that Barut eats people. Yes, Barut <laughs> does not eat people, but he's read a book on how That's to actually <laughs> canon. Oh, I'm mad at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. You're barely scratched, mate. Yeah, but you know, better to be oh, not man, scratched clerics at all. Are pussies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies. So, uh, this one is going to... I'm gonna attack Tobias. This is one of his things, Tobias. Like, you're at this point, you're like running up this like slight lot of boxes and, and troughs in the front of the building for a height advantage, and it just swings at you, and you're just like, like, it's not. When you see the attacks of a zombie coming, one zombie, easy. Which makes it even more embarrassing when this guy is gonna hit very. <laughs> He's gonna hit me. <laughs> now I need a new D6. I'll get a red one because they do more damage. Alright. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and it, it's one of those things where you're watching Barut carve into this guy, Verik, but it, it's very strange to watch. And you actually sort of come to as you just sort of feel cl slightly clawed hands sort of pouring at your side, ending up dealing two damage to you. Okay, yep. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. And next up is Eleanor. As a fountain of burnt bodies pours from the doorway. Uh, 
These zombies are always gonna like moving like exactly where I plan to move. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like, where I'm going. Last maybe second. you just <laughs> really understand. Oh, no. You just have the same tactical plans as a zombie. <laughs> All right, uh, that's definitely <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> Charge! <laughs> Ooh, you deal Damn. damage. Yep, it is cleaved open. Probably even chunk off an arm. It's not very hard to do so with these people. And your sword has removed a lot of body parts from a lot of bodies. Uh, but <laughs> yes. still pouring, still grasping. Speaking of grasping, Varric. So, seeing that happen, uh, I'm just going to... Oh, I can't... Mm, that other one's in the way. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> just going to... Take a, a retaliatory stab and then punch. Oops, oh, it's not an advantage this time. It's not an advantage. See me after class. That's it. <laughs> oh, and a one, of course. And then uh, I mean, I hit it's the a one plus three. I mean, uh, it's oh no! Hard. An eight is a hit. <laughs> oh my god! Zombies. I did a one. Zombies. I'm, being, I'm consistent. <laughs> if you're a monk, you do chip damage. It's kind of your thing. Tobias. Um, this was the one that I marked. So yes, this was the one that you marked. I'm gonna just jump off. I these really boxes. should mark it. All right. <laughs> Let's attack. I him. won't remember to do that next time. Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, ooh, both hits. Cool. So that is going to be this. Plus this. Plus this. Four. Pretty good damage. That it's not enough to take it down good. in one go. It is enough to take it down in one go? It is not. It's not. All right, so those things where you like jump down with both swords hacking at it, like brisket, and it's just sort of getting shredded and starts, like its arms starting to like peel off its body but they're just connected enough it is gross it's foul huh this is way worse than it was before anyway <laughs> it's for its turn yes it is <laughs> and i am going to swing at the one that uh tobias has been hacking away at are we gonna get a cleric kill steal potentially <laughs> also known as a kill secure by the support mm. that's a mm -hmm. hit it's okay. The I last time use that joke for nine all damage. The time. <laughs> you keep doing this, <laughs> like <laughs> oh, oh, God for dang. nine damage for nine damage. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, last time you did this, I rage twenty to a dude dead. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things you pierce through the freaking heart of the thing and wrench it out in a very extravagant manner, just as. Uh, Tobias is like, oh, this is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blood just... flies. <laughs> yeah, just... it's like horrible. Uzi. It's, yeah, bla it's, it's black, black bile at this point. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, yeah. Speaking of black bile. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, brute, this one tries to sort of grab at you and peel away at your armor. It's starting to sort of understand. It's one of those things your armor is keeping it at bay enough. Would you sort of be like, oh, stop it? Yeah. I imagine with my flourish from the from yeah. the swing through the heart, my shield just went up naturally, and that. Yeah, just... exactly. Uh, and the sim a very similar thing happens to you, Eleanor, with your tough armor and this zombie sort of ineffectually pouring at you with one arm because you removed the other. Is not is not doing a whole lot. So now you can kill it on your turn. Yep. Hmm. Kinda gross. Oh, <laughs> that's 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 you have to roll a one. <laughs> it's zombies. <laughs> zombies. But also that is the third it's die that has yeah. rolled off of a twenty and onto a two. Yeah. I have a all right, well, that's it's a hit. It's a hit. Oh, it is a hit. It's a hit. My apologies. I haven't been paying attention to what they're. No, I know. I know. Because why would you? This is just, 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 just you know, the life and death situation. You uh, <laughs> easily cut and cleave this zombie down. It's mm. it's almost child's play to you. 
you wouldn't necessarily trust children with these zombies. But if you could figure out a more accurate system, perhaps de-teeth and claw them, hmm. it could be child's play. Very good. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to do a little boop, boop, boop. I think we're clear. Boop, boop. Yeah, um, now that you're boop, you're thinking boop. about it, that was probably all of the zombies in the house. Do, I'm guessing I have to do acrobatics to jump over. Uh, yes. And it gets a chance to grab you. Ah. Does he get a chance he, to grab me? I mean, he got a chance. The one time a zombie gets a good roll, and you roll fucking <laughs> real good. Bonk. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you jump like you jump like over Aelnor. Over the zombie. The zombie's like Aah! and like grabs your shoe. And you like <laughs> as you're going, untie the buckle. And it just gets like a mouthful of shoe and nothing else. <laughs> hey, that's mine. And then uh short sword. That's a hit. Oh my god. <laughs> Just. And then... Zombies. Zombies. <laughs> yeah, zombies. It, mean, it's uh, fun dead. how bad they are. Yeah. <laughs> That's more like it. And yet, Virik can't kill one in a single turn. So really, he's the real idiot here. I mean, uh, I'm not spending anything to do so. I could I could spend a key, but I don't want to. Tobias. Mm. I'm just gonna Can I try and cut it out of his hand? <laughs> get my shoe out of his hand. It's like, no, mine. Stop. <laughs> You'll get the shoe soon enough. <laughs> Good. Can I try to shoot tatters. his hand and pin him to the <laughs> wall? So yes. In the shoe. Yes. Like preferably through the back of his head and then into the. Oh, wrist. that would be sweet. Maybe. Uh, longbow. How's that? <laughs> Oh. For eight damage. It's one of those things where you actually do exactly as you're like, I really hope I can do this. You shoot through its head, into its hand, pinning it to the wall. The the shoe that was kind of in its mouth and hand just like flopped back to the ground where it can like kick it up and like swoosh Ooh, it yeah. back onto his foot. Like, yeah. But the, but the zombie is still moving. Like, it moving and, like, pulls away. So it's only the bottom part of the jaw. The top of the head is still, is, like, pinned to the freaking door. It's starting to do it with the hand as well. It is horrible. It's this is horrible. so it's much worse. Time. We're going for another cleric kill still. I'm not rolling with advantage this time. So who knows? Maybe I'll be the first one to miss on a zombie here. <laughs> <laughs> with my rolls, Does that exist? Like, Can that happen? No. No. <laughs> for four damage. That should say slashing damage. I don't know why it doesn't. But anyways. And with fun. that, you carve the zombie to nothing. You take mm -hmm. a bit of time. There's some gurgling from them. There's some noise and panting from, from those who exerted yourselves slightly more. But uh, you... Are uh, you're clear? The combat is over. That was all of them. Like like Virik said, he yeah. counted. That was all. Of them. Well, he could. One of his didn't count in a moment after the fact becomes apparent. You know how it is. May I suggest we move the bodies back inside so it doesn't look like anyone's been here? Yes. Uh, the other thing, though, is. You said she wasn't coming back to life, which means she is in here. Yes, she is. Then we need to bury her, and we need to do it properly. There's also one more in a trapdoor. It's contained. We can probably kill it at a distance, but um, it's there. And there might be something we need afterwards. I grabbed as much as I could from the desk without it getting, getting to me, but I'm just letting you know. Okay. As one of things you now all of you walk into the burnt out house. What you notice? What do you think that Barut would notice, especially as a man of medicine? And Aelnor, actually. I, I I was literally thinking about this before, but I don't remember what for before the stream that like you're both people of medicine, just very different forms of it. Um Those the, the two people who aren't these burnt corpses, 
who uh, were saying, oh, you know, there's two other people. They didn't rise. They are dead much sooner. And just a cursory glance from you guys. Looks like they were probably attacked by the zombies and killed. Um, like, those guys are clearly in King of Spears, sort of goon clothing the people. They are the forgotten. Uh, when you go and poke around, there is no one in that trap door. They must have been the last zombie that came out of the door. Um, and Elodie's body is still there. Before anything else, uh, what is the traditional High Elvish burial? Uh, because I... It is usually cremation of some form, which is kind of ironic. A little bit. But um, it's one of those things, you could also bury her. A, a tra it, it's not so much traditional, is that she hasn't had her rights. Yeah. She hasn't been buried. She hasn't had. She hasn't been yeah. uh, mourned. Like it, that's that's the real thing. And yeah. probably now that she's already been burnt, it would be buried. It, yeah, at this point, cremation wouldn't make much sense, especially, like, just practically. Um, and I, I would know that, obviously, just because, you know, it's, Yeah, it's just a yeah. couple of things to make. Yeah, um, but I would, uh, I would immediately uh, pick her up. I'm not a weak man, but it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do it on my own, and I, I bring her out, and I uh, place her down in the in the vineyard there not we haven't dug a hole yet but we're going to i want to look around for a shovel <laughs> oh there would yeah there is one yeah and you yeah. just start digging uh is there any yeah. running else uh, you guys want to do while the, he's digging because he's gonna be a while you ever try to dig a hole Take i'm a gonna hole. i'm gonna be a while but do we really want to do that here i, I know we're supposed to be stealthy about this but honestly they know we're coming and they're gonna know that we were here with one body removed is it so much to bring the bodies back to their what friends and family they had left maybe give them to the church the zombies I don't I don't think it would be valuable at this stage we can't identify who they were we can't do anything with them but you're right Elodie would be, it would be better to bring her back. <laughs> Maybe she can rest in her friend's garden. Maybe. But transport of a dead body is going to be the process. It wasn't a short walk here. I... <sighs> Maybe we can put her uh, somewhere nearby so we can transport her properly later. I feel like it might be best to do that because then we can also make sure we put her to rest properly with the knowledge that we fixed this. And you would have heard a little bit of anger in that voice. Or it would hold your shoulder and he'd grip it. This is more physical contact than you've ever had with him. And he just looks you straight in the eye and he says, you're a good man, Virk. You're a good man. And he's going to pat you on the shoulder and uh, turn to everyone else and say, well, where do we want to keep her for now? And I will actually cast... Uh, something that I prepared just in case. Gentle repose on her. Mm -hmm. That was my only concern, but if you actually have that prep, that's amazing. I do. I was oh, just wow. like, well, I, I promised to give her a burial. And I had a feeling we'd be finding a corpse, and I was really hoping she wouldn't become more undead. It's also totally appropriate because in my mind, and hence Yavis here, Gentle mm -hmm. repose is sort of a concentrated form of a burial right. Yeah. So it's one of those things, clerics who can cast this, cast this on the graves of people who are buried to sanctify it. Um, yeah. So it's very appropriate right now to come. Yeah. We're going to maybe wrap her up in whatever you can and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. she's not. Gonna storm her is there, the hatch. 
in in a lot of vineyards uh they do a in the building they do a lining underneath the dirt before they plant uh any of the vines uh that lining if is you're, a if you're trying fabric. to yeah if, if you're looking for like a roll of you, you find yeah. a roll of fabric to wrap that's, up, that's fine. what i'm looking for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Wrap I, I don't think leaving her in the, in the building is a good idea um i think leaving her nearby would be better To be honest with you, do we trust the guards at the front gate? I do, I but didn't. I'm asking if you do. I didn't go to them because I'm not sure someone with as far reach uh, or as big plans as they do would have plans for guards. Yes, they would. But the body is wrapped up. And I am a cleric. That's Not true. of their faith, but my faith was if we told them it was someone else. We don't even have some... to tell them yeah. that it was someone else. We can simply tell them that I gained a request from her last living family to bring her back and to give her a peaceful burial. And should anything happen, that they will receive the smiting of not only my god, but theirs and the sun itself. Perhaps they'll listen. Okay. And I'm going to pick her up in the canvas that we've wrapped her in and start heading start, back to the city. Start heading it's back to the city. It's one of those things that that whole conversation follows when you're going through the gate. They're like, what the hell are you guys doing? And then you, you explain... It is enough. You are very clearly a man of faith. Anyone who can, anyone who understands Elvish religions, can tell that. I probably could have even uh, quickly made a, a fake. Yeah, exactly. If you wanted to, it's... but you don't even yeah. need to. Um, yeah. your, what, what's your what's your what's your plan with the body? I am asking them to, uh, first of all, where the nearest church is in the city. Um, it would be quite and... a ways away. So be it. Sort of where your tavern is and, and stuff, that sort of area, which isn't uh, super far away, but you know, not immediately past this gate. Fair enough. I would ask them to aid in transport if they have one person that they can spare. That's probably too much. Hmm. To and if they them. don't, then I'll just ask for directions. Yeah, and they, they can easily point you to Varric them. would be helping. Like, he would yeah. definitely be helping. Yeah. Well, Burrow's holding her, uh, kind of cradled, if that makes sense. So he's yeah. No, I I, I get you. When you uh, head to the, it's one of the things you have to go through semi-public streets, and there's definitely some eyes and curiosities, and high elves are nothing if not gossipy. So you know that there will yeah. be questions and, and conversations, but they never directly address you because that's how high elves are. They make their own little stories about what's going on. Yeah. And you head to which this. Which is why Buru doesn't really respect them. Exactly. You head to this <laughs> church, which has its nice little own plot of land, almost like a perfect little square, and then there's this little uh, pale marble sort of church. Not quite similar to the temple that you saw before, but it, it has a similar sort of interior where the sun streams in uh, into a, a sort of. Uh, antechamber before the true uh, church, and that's where. You know, clerics would just come in and then you would do all the talking and start the process of a proper true burial for her here. Yeah. And that's what is the cost? Be, uh, they would they would waive any cost. Okay. Because of the it's one of those things when the, the, they know there was a fire, they didn't necessarily know the particulars, but it's one of those you explain <laughs> and your helps. Uh, <laughs> and they they start to <laughs> believe it's one of the things you you are a cleric you talk it through to other clerics yeah you give her a a true burial they do end up cremating her with the equipment they have there they essentially vaporize her with light it's yeah. a it's a, a, a similar to a crematorium type device but clearly a, a magical high element one for their faith which is the point um and uh they say that they will um, kind of leave a small little urn and it will be put in the appropriate resting grounds of, of, of someone for her. And that will actually be where we end off here with pretty much the 
day into the evening of Beirut mostly working on this. And maybe if anyone else wanted to do something else, we'll deal with that next week. But we're already over time. And I'm hungry. Oh. That is fair. <laughs> yeah. I've also had way too much coffee, so I'm simultaneously wide awake and crashing, which is great. So, we're going to start our circle of shame here with the man in the hotel. Dungeon Dad, who are you? How are you? Hello. I am indeed in a hotel. I am traveling for work and I took my computer with me, which was... a risky move but it paid off <laughs> <laughs> well i had to tr i had to check in with some luggage because the screen's too big because it's a it's a mac so it's like all one thing anyways uh yeah i am that guy dungeon dad i have a youtube channel i talk about monsters and D, &D stuff and how to run the game that presumably you have interest in because you're you're watching us play um yeah I, I talk about monsters, so if you're a DM and you like using cool monsters that aren't in the monster manual and you want either stat blocks for those monsters or just to be inspired and learn about stuff that we didn't know existed, swing by the old YouTube channel and give her a gander. I appro Ollie approved. I don't think I've used anything yet, but they, it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's always surreal to me when it does. It's a campaign I started playing in an online game and one of the guys used a monster and I was like, this thing sucks. Why is it killing us so much? Who made it? The oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> All right. Next up in the Wheel of Shame. Circle of Shame. It's not a wheel. It's a circle. It's different. Aaron, who are you? How Hi. are you? I'm good. I'm Aaron. I play here on Sundays? Sundays. It's Monday. a Sunday-Monday situation. Sunday, Monday, with, um, Monday. On Delic's channel on Friday, so I'm very tired. Yeah, it is, it is bedtime. Mm -hmm. Aside from it isn't, because you have things to do after this. I do. I don't. <laughs> but I probably won't go to bed me. either. Speaking of bed... I don't know, Tesh. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I only barely got out of bed this morning for this. <laughs> <laughs> the Hi, Australian who's yep, in the Australian. other time zone. The yep. one I can't uh, it's fathom. definitely Monday for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, Tesh of the Tesh Tube. You can find me on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter under that name. Uh, and you can find me here on Sundays. You can find me on Draco the Dragovian Empire on Good Thursdays enough. at 8 p.m. EST. Uh, and maybe other places soon in the future. Uh, you should follow my Twitter because that's where you learn about all the stuff and especially follow if you like Destiny and Warframe because I'm kind of obsessed at the moment and there's going to be a lot of stuff on that. <laughs> all right. And last and most certainly least, Will, who are you? What are you doing? That Twitter name is wrong on there. Don't Yeah, use that ignore name. the Twitter name on there. What if you want to do is you want to go. On YouTube, it should be the right one. I think I changed it, but I might not. And if you didn't, that's okay. As long as you have twitch.tv slash Games, all of the links that you need to find me are there. You can uh, help me out. I'm three followers away from affiliate, uh, uh, which is very exciting. I remember that. that will eventually it, happen. Each follower is, like, painful at It that is point. so close. It's yeah. so close. But also, uh, Patreon is somewhere where you can actually help me out a ton. I'm doing a lot more writing content. Uh, the first short story... Uh, is going to be coming out in about a week on there uh, for Patreons who are at a uh, certain level. Uh, and then also, I'm going to be reading short stories, some of my favorite short stories, because I've been told that I should do this, because apparently some people like my voice, which is weird. I wouldn't and I'm understand. Still not, yeah, I have no idea. It's a D-class voice. Yeah, like so at the very class. most. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. anyways. Um, but I'm going to be reading out some of my favorite short stories, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, getting into a, uh, a more... yes, nerd, and... story for nerds. nerd stories for nerds. Um, but I also do writing on my channel at twitch.tv slash Winterbear Games, where you can find me doing all that stuff. So, yeah. All right. Where he has nerd stories for nerds. I have nerd art for nerds. I am only here. If you don't know, I am an illustrator. Check. Twitter, all I rant for art. I'm also, because no, I no. just got a new uh, computer device, I am probably going to be doing more art streams because I have a bunch of commissions and some of them might be for companies. 
that want a little bit of representation on my channel. So, uh, do keep around for that. I do this game here on Sundays, which I love, and we have Ardent on Wednesdays that is nearing the end. Maybe we'll go back to Yavaski when that's done and we'll have two Yavaski streams running at the same time. How crazy would that be? If you thought that there was enough tandent crossovers in this one, <laughs> just you wait until there's two running at the same time. Also, the reminder that there's a Discord down below, the Force Prince Discord that worked with me and Derek. It's great. We talk all the time about either dumb jokes. I also post all my art there. And if you want to ask about, um, I also post my fucking Warhammer paintings there because. Where else am I going to do it? Uh, if you want to actually like ask us questions in particular, there's also a spoiler chat. So if you're if you have theories about what the heck is going on, that is the place to discuss it. It is way quieter than Scott's bad Witcher games chat, and we should really, you know, come on, you know, there's more going. I started on. checking it now. I started. Uh, I posted my first thing in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very uh, notes. <laughs> also a reminder that this show is supported by Patreon. Link is down there you can actually make npcs and all that thing but also the patreon also has all the behind scenes of my art so if you actually want to see things i haven't streamed i will it's the process and it's pretty cool to see the behind the scenes and um most often paintings that will never get finished so you'll only ever see them on there um and most of my paintings are to do with the gear so you'll see uh shit so <laughs> That's that. Uh, we should be here next week. Uh, Ernie, are you gone next week or is it the week after that? Ah, uh, good question. Let me check my calendar. It's the week after that. It's the week, I thought it's it the week like after that, that for you, yeah. but it's this week for me. Uh, this week coming up because it's Thanksgiving here. Oh, and so you're I, not here oh. next week. I will not be here next week. So that um, funeral is going to take much longer than that. Uh, I may go stuff. talk to... Uh, Caldicus, and see if I can get more notes before yeah, we, yeah. You, you but can, you know. You make a be proper funeral stuff. as far as like she Exactly, you, you have yeah. downtime to deal with. Yeah. So, we'll deal with that next week, here, same bat time, same bat channel, I'll leave you all now, you can get on with your lives, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, that's the thing that we say, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Also, if anyone's watching from Ritz, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs>